So, so, oh, so don't play it there. Yeah, yeah, if can you that's move That's what I have. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I'm not playing with the sequence. Like, that's just the intro. And then, go, 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 boom, go, tra. Yeah. Ding, dun, go, go, go. That's when it jumps into the other key. <laughs> Even when we recorded it, yeah. man, I was rough. Are like you sure we want to do this? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me say goodbye to yeah. <laughs> Give it a kiss. Give it a kiss. I know, I know. I did, I did it. I did it. It was fun to do. But then when Miles and them played it, I got the feeling right now. I have it. Why? It's, it's okay. Miles Davis. In Tutu, when I was building this track up, I tried to incorporate all of Miles' uh, previous uh, periods in this one tune. So if you listen to the drums, the beat is from New Orleans. Right? It's a beat that he had shown me years before. He called it a New Orleans two-step or something, you know? And the, uh, the harmony is from the, uh, from the 60s, you know, like it's kind of Gil Evans and Herbie Hancock type of harmony, you know? And there's a, a ensemble playing with soft brass, like the trombones from the 50s, like the birth of the cool, right? And then there's the forts, kind of harmony that Miles started experimenting with in the 70s, right? So I have elements from every one of his eras in Tutu. So I was really excited to see which of those elements he was going to connect to, you know. And the thing that he connected to was the blues element of it. What's really surprising when I think about it now is that this thing was really a different way of making music for him. And he never seemed uncomfortable for a second. I mean, I'm just now realizing that you know, there are some jazz musicians who couldn't overdub. They could not do it. And that never happened with Miles. And not only did he get into it, but he found different ways to do it. He was saying, hey, run that back. I want to try something else. You know, I want to try another approach. You know, he was he completely embraced it without a second of transition. You know, Miles was 61 years old. He could have been like, Marcus, uh, now what happens, you know, uh, we're the musicians. What, am I supposed to play to the music I hear in the headphones? You know, he could have very easily been uncomfortable, but he was like ahead of it. And it's just a testament to how forward thinking he was. You know, he was completely ready for a new situation, a new challenge. I think that uh, when I hear Tutu, I definitely hear the 80s. But I think there's some depth to the music. You know, it wasn't just about the modern sounds. That wasn't it. And I think if you have melodies and you have harmonies, the traditional music elements, then there's a good chance that that music will transcend the era that it was created in. And maybe it'll appeal to people in the future down the road when it's no longer, you know, the sound of the day. It's a scary thing when you're doing like contemporary music because you have no guarantee that your music will ever make it out of the little window that you're creating it in. If you play a more traditional form of jazz, a, a form of jazz that has already proven to be timeless, then you don't have that worry. But to create something for that moment, uh, you never know. You're just taking a chance. But that's what Miles was all about, you know? And I think if you succeed, if you create something that's of that moment and it ends up uh, becoming timeless, that's the ultimate victory. That's the ultimate win. <laughs> Okay, so you want me to just... Yeah, let's try it like that. Back, can I get some more, please? So we're not going to do the other part. Oh, we're not doing that? I don't know, because uh, are we doing it? We're doing Tutu Revisited now. Uh, first time I've really kind of revisited this music in 20 some odd years, you know? And uh, but I did think it would be interesting for me, particularly since I wasn't in the band when I wrote that music for Miles. You know, it's not just Tutu, but for Tutu and Siesta and Amandla, the three albums that I wrote music and produced for Miles, 
I wasn't in his band, so I really only got to play some of those songs one time in the studio when we recorded it, and that was the last time. So I never got the pleasure of exploring those songs and seeing what else you can find on a night-to-night -night basis on a tour. So I said, what can I do so that it would be okay with Miles' mentality? And I decided to get all young musicians who could bring a new energy to this music, and maybe we could use the notes of Tutu maybe to create something new and something for today.